All right, hello, Chiefs Kingdom, and welcome back to the playoffs. We are here with another special playoff edition with our wild card weekend opponent. And so I'm joined once again by Pittsburgh resident and super fan Josh Roswog. So welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Josh. Good to be back on. Yeah, good stuff. All right. So we're uh, playing each other this weekend, like everybody expected from the beginning of the season, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> expected yeah, be- one of these teams to be there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I believe we talked last over the offseason. He didn't have a whole lot of confidence in what the Steelers season was doing. I, I feel like I actually had more than you did just based on their uh their their coach and just the general culture and so i can't say that i was surprised at all to see mike tomlin guide another non-losing season which his his run of that is just in- incredible you know yep. roethlisberger has never had a losing season um tomlin hasn't had a losing season as a head coach i mean i i think that that uh speaks volumes to what having um organizational stability and a good just coach and leader up top and you know, dealing with a, with a couple of middling seasons here and there to keep things going. So, I mean, that, that's, that was impressive to me, but I don't think anybody, including the Steelers expected um, when, when there was three, four games left in the season for them to be in the playoffs. I mean, it was just kind of wild how the whole thing played out. Yeah, it was nuts. And I can say being in, being in Pittsburgh, exactly what you said. I think everyone was pretty much counting them out is more, okay, is Tomlin going to get to that 500 record and get that eight, eight and one because of getting that terrible tie against Detroit that felt like a loss that having that, it gave him the chance to go eight, eight and one and have that tie. Cause you thought he was either going to go uh, now with the odd number of games, he was going to have that, to the best chance it looked like of having that losing record finally. So figure they're playing for that. And then when they started to pull those games out at the end of the year and then crazy week 17, that, that even, even up until while that Jaguars Colts game was going on, you still thought there was no chance. Even when Jaguars got up, still sat there thinking, all right, Colts are going to come back. There's no way that can happen. And then I'm, um, don't know i'm sure a lot of you other people stayed up and watched uh that crazy game that kept us up all night and thought was going to end the tie just to really stick it to us get our hopes yeah. up and then bring us <laughs> crashing down but yeah somehow snuck in yeah that was going to be my first question is what what was that day <laughs> like so that's a that's a good description i mean for me i think it was kind of just this uh surreal situation because um you know my game got flexed to Saturday and I'm still mad about that because uh, I didn't, I didn't get to do anything other than just watch that game on my phone. I mean, this, uh, these first couple weekends of the, the year are traditionally really busy for me, just from, um, you know, like a, a business standpoint, I was at a wedding show and then I, I was actually DJing a wedding on Saturday. And, and so initially this was going to be the three uh, 30 central time game on Sunday. And I, I had a, I had a, a business colleague out from Kansas city. And so we were going to go hit our watch party and, you know, have a good night watching the chiefs close the season out, beat, beat Denver. And then they flex it to three 30 on, on Saturday. It's like, what the hell is this? What, why, why that game? I mean, I understand why the NFL scheduled it that way. Cause you, you have Tennessee going into the game, knowing what they do and don't have to do to, to get yeah. or not get the one seed. Um, it, it, it was basically the first domino that needed to fall. Everybody had a tiebreaker over Kansas city based on them losing to what's uh, what's looking like the cream of the uh, AFC crop. In fact, they are, they, they, they've lost to all three of the other one through four seeds. So yep, it's, it's, uh, crazy. it's pretty wild, pretty wild, but yeah, I mean, d- didn't expect Pittsburgh to be there, but at the same time, I can't say that I'm surprised that a, a team that never has a losing record is resilient enough. And, I mean, I was talking to somebody about the uh, the Patriots earlier today, and there's there's the whole thing where you can call them the Cheatriots, you can you can call all of this stuff. I mean, to me, the Patriots are a math problem, and that's it. Yeah, um, they yeah. they won their division every single year. They played well enough to get one of the two buys, so they put themselves in a scenario where you have to win one game to get to the conference championship. So, if they play the math game where they're winning that game two out of three times and they take a 50% clip on the conference championship game. 
over a 15 year period of time, that's going to seven or eight <laughs> Super Bowls. Yep. You know, yeah. um, it, it, it's definitely True. more. It's, def, it's definitely five. And so, uh, you know, you, you, you get close and uh, football is a weird game. It's an oblong ball that bounces weird ways, you know, just putting yourself in yep. position is the most important thing. And Pittsburgh does that a, a good job of that. So I have to say that I'm definitely expecting the chiefs to win. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting them to cover the spread, but I'm not going to be surprised if, if they don't. I'm not going to be surprised if this game is closer than, you know, a logical sense would think it would be. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we go into the fourth quarter and, and there's a, uh, you know, hey, the Steelers could possibly pull this one off. I think they get a win. I'm guessing I'm giving them more credit than you're going to. But what are your thoughts? What, what, what do you think the chances are that the Steelers play next weekend? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll give you my assessment. So what you outlined there, I'll say it's – it's the first time, usually in the Pittsburgh area, anytime the Steelers are in the playoffs, there's still even that false hope, even if realistically the people that know football know that, okay, it's not looking good. There's always enough yinzers around here that are holding out hope, think they can win. I can say it's consensus, it seems, around here that there's there's not much hope. I think everyone's happy. Ben made it to the playoffs since last season, just – how crazy things were week 17 that that's a, a change from years past. I'll say the attitude overall, I'm holding out hope that based on Roethlisberger's last year, and you have those crazy stories, like we had Jerome Bettis go and win the Super Bowl in his hometown in Detroit. And that story, when they got in winning all those games at the end is the sixth seed that year at the bottom and so there's the part of me that's holding out hope that they have that story that they can, uh, that magical story that can come true. But then the realist in me is saying there's not a chance. We saw what happened in the regular season. Nothing really has changed. There's been a couple, made a slight improvement on our line, a um, little bit more chemistry, but our receivers are still underperforming. Roethlisberger's still almost 40 years old and you can see it just the way he throws he doesn't have what he used to so that's all still the same the Chiefs are the Chiefs so that's the realist in me so I'll throw a little bit of uh money um on the uh the Steelers money line but I'll put most of my money on the Chiefs covering I heard I'll give you a quick stat I heard I forget how many years back but uh, how many years back it goes but of double digit underdogs in the first round of playoffs out of the last like 10 only one has won and one other one is covered the reds or the sorry washington football team covered <laughs> against the buccaneers uh i think they're dogs by 10 or 10 and a half they that was covered last year with right? eight yeah yep. yeah so they covered and then the only team that won is the uh seahawks beating the saints when they got with that losing record in the march yeah Lynch. the one where they set Earth off the Richter scale yep. Yeah. So, so those are the only two times I think they're both like 10 point dogs. And now I think I was seeing 12 and a half right now. So yeah. the realist in me is, is uh, saying, take, take, uh, take the chiefs minus those points, but still a little bit of hope. I'm going to hold out for, for that uh, big Ben last season magic. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like you're calling the uh, winning the last two games of the season, kind of the swan song that he got. And that was his going out with a bang. And I mean, beat, beating the Ravens uh, in, yeah, in Baltimore. <clears throat> I mean, that, that's what you Browns want. and I mean, Ravens. You can't, yeah, you can't. Well, really that's what he built his career on. His, uh, exactly. He built winning his career those. on humiliating the Browns and beating the Ravens when he needed to. Um, exactly. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to grab on that uh, Seahawks uh, Saints game. That was wild. Cause um <laughs> I remember that team being the uh, see you can't let anybody that's got a losing record get into the playoffs and they're going to host a game and then they go and they, they just thump the saints. I mean, they thumped <laughs> yeah. the saints. That was a, uh, <clears throat> that was a wild game. Um, but so uh, let, let me ask you this. Do you think the Steelers should be a playoff team? And what I'm really asking is should this seventh playoff team even exist? Oh, I've gone back and forth after watching this year. Well, obviously, because Pittsburgh got in, I like it, but it added excitement. So I don't know if it's a combination of seven team and the 17 games, but the excitement and I guess 
nerve wracking that it did to me in, in the last week of the game, but it allows for that extra team. You got, you I'm sure saw you follow it. How many teams were still in the hunt every time they put that up the last four weeks, usually it, sure. it's down to like nothing by the last week of the year this year, you have all those teams. So I like the fact that it, uh, gives more teams opportunity keeps it more interesting till the very very end like it did this year so i i like that aspect of it um and i guess i don't feel as bad one team i guess it kind of screws the chiefs this year not getting a buy or anything uh in that first round but just rewarding that one team i don't have a problem with it that with that the team that comes out on top so I guess right now where I'm sitting talking to you at this current moment in time, I'd say I, I, I like it. I think it's, think it's good. Yeah. I mean, it kind of reminds me of baseball and, and I, I distinctly remember the game where baseball decided they were going to do the wild card playing game. And I can't remember what year it was, but we're going to say 2014 for the sake of discussion because it was close to that, but yeah. it was, it was the Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays and it was the last game of the season. And it was a win in there in. And I can't remember if it was a 62 or a 163 game, but um, mm-hmm. I, I should probably be better. But I remember watching this because I was at this bar that doesn't exist in Milwaukee anymore that had volleyball uh, sand courts. And then they had this uh, just really nice outdoor bar. And so we played there forever. And um, one of my best friends up here in Milwaukee is from Boston. So he's obviously in his Red Sox hat. And this game wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, the Red Sox faltered down the stretch, which is why the uh, Rays even had a chance. And if I remember correctly, it was it was a 62 or a 63, but there there ended up being all these playoff um, playing game implications. The Rays ended up winning that game. And basically everybody that watched baseball woke up and said, that was friggin' awesome. We should do this every single year. And. <laughs> You know, in, in that situation, the the Rays are always a good team. The Red Sox faltered a little bit and let them catch up, but it, it's still a little different than when you have these 95 win teams that end up having to play a play in because you have these 89 win divisions that um, let a let a team in and everything. So I I uh, I kind of go back and forth, you know, and it depends yeah. on on who you're rooting for. I mean, with baseball, the one game is a little more chaos and football. I think I'm a little more OK with it because a single game of football isn't chaos. That's not how the, how the right. game's wired. And right. is there going to be a world where there's a seven seed that can go and win the Super Bowl? Sure. I mean, there probably will be. Um, I think it's a lot less likely than that number five second wild card in baseball. You know, it, it just baseball is more of a streaky kind of sport. Um, winning winning one game is is more to, you know, God only knows what could happen. And it's and, you know, you win that game and that can propel you to a to a th- uh, three uh, out of five series and everything. So yep. I, I think overall I'm OK with it. And the uh, the argument anytime somebody, you know, whines about baseball having these extra playoff teams as well, you know, win your division and that's not a not a problem (laughs) over 162 games in this situation i think that's pretty accurate because um you know if you think about the grievances the uh the patriots would be the last team in in a a previous world which seems kind of accurate and in this situation i mean the colts um they win and i and they should have been a a six seed i believe so i mean they would they would have bounced everybody and you know when you're in situation is what you're going for when it comes to competition and that was certainly present this year and uh the colts dropped the ball bigger than life you know i don't i don't think there's enough uh, shade you can i still don't believe it it's unbelievable oh i know i mean you know my uh my column writing and stuff i i made a comment that the uh, chargers should be ashamed of themselves i mean they crapped down their leg this year um but the Colts, you know, if the Chargers should be ashamed, the Colts should go to the woods and disappear and never come back. I mean, it blows my mind still. Yeah, I just <laughs> to to go out that way. I mean, Carson Wentz's career might be over. He might be a backup. Yeah. I mean, earlier in the season, if there was a uh, guy who was a high end starter that I thought was going to be a backup after this, Jared Goff is who I would have picked. Yep. Yeah. Um, agree. He kind of played himself back into a job. You know, I mean, Dan yep. Campbell. Lions suck, but Dan Campbell has that that team playing together. It has them believing in each other. Yeah. Um, it's not like there's a quarterback they can go out and draft. But I mean, from a Colts standpoint, I mean, I, I almost think they have to move on, right? You have to after after that and 
just everything else throughout the years that he had some high moments, but just some really, really bad moments. And then the big estimation point on that and in that last game of the year. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Crazy. All right. So let's just, uh, let's play this weird. What if scenario, let's just say the uh, Steelers managed to pull this off. What do you think a path looks like for them after that? I mean, they, they'd obviously go to Tennessee. That's the next thing. Would, would there be a chance to, to do anything against Tennessee? Uh, <laughs> again, I'll hold out the, uh, the magic ride hope for Ben, but I, I wouldn't see them beating that Tennessee team twice in a year. And especially I'm expecting them. I don't know if Henry will be completely healthy, but him back, the Steelers are atrocious against the run. And I'm sure he'll be mo- coming back motivated. Um, as long as that foot's holding up. All right. I, I think it'd be a buzzsaw for them if, if they find a way to get there, just because it's, it's tough to beat a well-coached team that Titans have like with, with Vrabel, I feel like twice in a year when you're the inferior team, um, again, good coach, like you said, and steadiness, but just from a talent perspective, I couldn't see them beating them, beating them again. Got it. Okay. So, I think everybody knows this is the end of the era for, for Roethlisberger. Let's uh, let's just assume that this uh, Sunday night is his retirement party he has all the uh, social media around uh, Kansas city and the people that I hang out with are, are putting out. I feel like it's a little, you know, um, ahead of its time and a little, let, let, let's be business-like about this game. That's what so, I like to hear though. I, I like that. That the stuff that gives me some hope that something will happen. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, and, and I mean, I, I think it's hilarious. The, the Tom went, Oh, I went to bed. I wasn't even paying attention. It's like, shut up. Maybe you and then <laughs> Roethlisberger is just like, Oh yeah, you know, there's no chance we're going to win. We might as well not even show up and play and just have fun or whatever. It's like, all right, stop it. Um, and uh, you know, I, I believe that Kansas city's locker room and coaching leadership is strong enough to not yeah, let they're, them, Yeah. Um, they're not looking past happen. anyone. So, um, I, I guess uh, my last question about this game is what does success look like to you? Assuming it's not a win, what do you think is a successful end to Roethlisberger's career into this season? What, what does that look like this uh, Sunday? So he, he surprised me finished this year a lot better at this point already. I think it will um, be a little bit of a blemish if they get blown out like they did last time they played. Mm-hmm. But I think if he doesn't turn the ball over and it's a close game, uh, even with a loss, I think you, you can't ask for more. What I, I'll kind of I'll lay out the scenario that I think would be a, a good scenario in, in a loss. So Roethlisberger goes, takes his team down, drives near the end of the game, maybe get some under two minutes with like a minute left and they take the lead him leading that drive. But then Mahomes goes in and, and leads the chiefs down to, to score and win by whether it's between two and four, five points or something like that. And in the chiefs win. So that's, that's sort of in my mind, that's if I'm guessing and I guess hold out hope for the best scenario, that would be it. Roethlisberger does everything he can goes and, and gets them in position to win and then what you would expect Mahomes and the Chiefs offense goes down and, and wins it with as time expires but I would consider that a, a successful uh, ending and, and sending off in hopefully a real somewhat realistic one. So uh, in, in other words spoiler alert on a 15 year old movie that I'm sorry if anybody's offended by so it's the end of 300 where the Spartans make it there and then all of a sudden they look up and it's like all these arrows coming down it's just like this ended the way that it was going to end but it was but more it, of a battle than you thought it was going to be and then everybody can talk about Roethlisberger being a warrior for the rest of you know football time so you nailed so, it you nailed so, yeah, it yeah there, there we go there we go um so uh if this plays out that way, that's uh, that's my column that I wrote half of right now. <laughs> we'll make that Done. Analogy. We took care of it <laughs> right there, right there. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's uh, let, let's kind of take a peek into um, what the off season is going to look like. I mean, if there's anybody who's proved as metal as a coach, you know, ten times over, I think Mike Tomlin's done it. Um, so another another season. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of front office shakeup, a little bit of coordinator shakeup that's potentially coming. But the biggest thing is um, the uh, question of who's going to play quarterback is actually a question for the first time 
in a really, really long time. It probably should have been a question a couple of years ago, but I understand why it's not. And, uh, you know, for all rights and purposes, um, the, the Roethlisberger led Steelers making the playoffs this year kind of validates riding with him. So what does the next step look like? I, I think it's pretty safe to say that your next quarterback's not on the roster right now. So uh, what, what's the plan? What do you think we're looking at? Well, I kind of hope what you just said is the case that he's not on the roster because if they have to go with Mason Rudolph, it's, it's going to be an ugly year. Um, but you hear there's all the buzz and I'll call it fake talk, but, uh, all the, everyone kind of spurting off all, oh, they're going to sign a, a veteran quarterback. They're going to look to get one in free agency or make a trade, or I honestly don't see that happening. That's not how they roll. So if I had to guess, um, well now seeing wherever that they kind of lowered their draft position a little bit, um, there's not a real strong quarterback class, at least as of now that I see, but I see them probably at least drafting one somewhat early on, probably just ride with Rudolph through this year and, and I think deal with a down year. Um, that's my thoughts on what will realistically happen. Now, I, like I said, I don't see them changing their normal procedures and signing or trading for a, a veteran, but it would be would be cool if they did, and uh, I'm still holding out hope for that. But realistically, I think they'll go with Rudolph for one year, look to draft someone somewhat early on at least, and, and kind of go from there, but have that sort of off and interim year, and I'm just hoping it doesn't last too long. But sure. uh, it, I have a it's a good chance it might. It will, you know. I mean, uh, so let's just uh, throw this theoretical out. Uh, there, there's no Dwayne Haskins, you think, possibility at all? Uh, I, I tend to. I, that, yeah, I got some input from him. I know people for the Washington football team that dealt with them, and it's, uh, yeah, I don't see him just unless he's had a, does a complete 180 with his attitude and his how he's approaching the game. Uh, I think there is some raw talent, but uh, I don't see, I see them going with Mason Rudolph rather than him. Just again, based on what I've heard, seen here and from the time in Washington. Maybe pull one more uh, run of Fitz magic. I mean, this could be his uh, swan song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'm sure he'll break another hip or whatever he did, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, mean, it, I, uh, I personally don't think that, there's any chance at all that um russell wilson goes anywhere and yeah. i'm kind of starting to think that there's no chance aaron Rodgers is going I'm anywhere. With you. i think he's staying put Re regardless i don't think either one of them are coming to yeah. come to pittsburgh which which ultimately means that the highest priced um free agent is probably going to be jimmy garoppolo which yeah. i would say in a normal situation where you know he's not getting a first round and a second round like he could potentially get because somebody's going to get desperate and, and try that um yeah you know he would be a guy that i could see going oh to i Pittsburgh. would i, I, I would think take that him in a second i thought i, I yeah. would like him a lot and i think he would do well here and i think the team would do well hopefully the defense would tighten up sure. the receivers sure. perform where they should for him but i i think that's a would be a great fit i don't yeah. know that it would happen but I, I agree with you on that one. But realistically speaking, I mean, let's just say that the uh, Panthers are done with Sam Darnold. Let's say the Broncos are done with Teddy Bridgewater. Let's say the Broncos are done with Drew Locke. Let's say the, um, let's say the Saints are done with Jameis Winston. Let's say, uh, God forbid, the something really crazy happens. I mean, actually, I wouldn't even say God forbid, and this wouldn't even surprise me. Let's say two is no longer on the Dolphins. Um, I, I, I definitely know that Pittsburgh is not going to be trading for uh, Deshaun Watson by any means. Um, but, but let's just say of those, of those that I just mentioned, um, who do you think would be the best fit that you think the city would actually receive that you think could uh, come in and fit the culture of, for the most part, we're going to try and hand the ball off and, you know, control the clock. Wow. That's a, a good question. Um, there's a lot from your list you went through there. Um, I'd probably say it'd be more of a somewhat experienced guy. Um, I don't know why Bridgewater sticks out as one. I think he'd be all right. 
I agree with that. Yeah, I think he, I think he'd fit in with with Tomlin, the culture, and I feel like he would yeah. uh, he'd be all right being that type of game manager. But he can he can make the completions when he needs to if he's staying healthy. So he, I don't know, just off the top of my head, without giving much more thought from that list, think it'd be a good one. Like obviously, I think. Tua, uh, you still don't know how much potential he has, but with that young, younger guy, that mentality, I think I'd go more towards a little bit more veteran, like like the Bridgewater type. Yeah, and I think that you 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 pointed something out that you're probably going to be living with next year. There's probably going to be an if they can stay healthy guy that ends up yep. um, there. Yep. You know, I mean, if you're trying to pick a spot to uh, reclaim some of your <clears throat> some of your value. Pittsburgh seems like as good of a place to, to go. Um, yep. But, you know, if I, if I was, uh, if I was betting, I, I would bet on Bridgewater or Ryan Fitzpatrick making a stop there. I, I really yep. don't think you should sleep on that idea. And uh, it, it would not surprise me one bit if this decided to be the year that he's healthy for the entire season and Mason Rudolph holds the clipboard and the, the Steelers yeah. rip off 10, 11 wins and go to the playoffs. Um, that, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> yep. I, I would take it. I would just take that to uh, take off the, the Bengals, the uh, Ravens and the, and the Browns. That always makes my year if they can find a way to do that. Yeah. 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 No, there, there's certainly no, uh, what I love about that division is that there is certainly no love loss between really any of the teams. I mean, the Bengals are kind of the, the ones that are sitting on the end of the bench. But I mean, during the Marvin Lewis, uh, I, I was talking to Jason Schilling earlier today, just, just, okay. uh, right. you know, so we had the, we had the Bengals thing. He hates your team, um, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the Bengals are the kid brother, but the, I mean, they were relevant the entire Marvin Lewis period of time. Right. You know, it was they just couldn't, couldn't win in the playoffs if they got exactly, there and they exactly, couldn't. Exactly. Exactly. But they, they were there and they were a team you had to pay attention to. And I, I yeah. wouldn't say that, anybody ever went into the playoffs saying, God, I hope I draw the Bengals, you know, you just, you don't want to, but um, they ended up, they ended up losing more often than not. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I think this is going to be an interesting off season for Pittsburgh. I mean, they've, they've, it sounds like just, just listening to you talk that the uh, fans are, are pretty realistic and they've, they've bought the amount of just uh, be patient with us that they should, they should have. And I mean, that organization should have some patience for the fan from the fans. I mean, Roth, Roethlisberger did a lot. So yeah, yeah, um, I agree. End of an era. Um, can't say yeah. I ever liked the guy, but um, <laughs> the the league's definitely going to be odd not having him there. And yeah, uh, yeah. he's the uh, the kind of last of uh, the uh, old guard college time, mid twenties, yeah. early thirties kind of kind of thing for me. So it's. Uh, it's going to be odd to not see him there. And it's, uh, it's making us feel old. So it's, yeah, I mean, me. it's definitely making me feel old, you know, but, but you watch it, you watch it change and football has a way of doing that. You'll have the quarterbacks that change over. And I mean, every single sport does that. You'll have the, you'll have the players. I mean, football has got a distinction though, where you have quarterbacks and um, you know, the day, Tom Brady retires will really feel old <laughs> <laughs> if that ever happens if that ever happens yeah I'm, I'm not positive it's going to but um you know it's, it just makes him more of a marvel every time you see somebody like it's a crazy. Roethlisberger sit down it's just like he he's 40 and he looks like he's 40 and crazy yeah he shouldn't be winging the ball like he used to but then you look at Brady and it's just like huh. he's setting career highs this year in like every yeah. category it's yeah. nuts but I can certainly tell you, I'm not taking his diet and his sleep and, nah. you know, workout regimen. Not worth like, it. <laughs> I, I, I want to have fun way more than that, you know. It's just. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, and then, I, and then I think it's funny that people are shocked that he's doing things like getting hammered and jumping off of boats and stuff like that. I'm like, Dude, that's the one time this guy got out of the house this year. <laughs> Let him live like, it up a little. You're really surprised that he's acting this way. <laughs> you know? His body's not used to it. Yeah. <sighs> Body's not used to a third beer. I mean, let's be yeah, honest. Exactly. You know, I mean, you watch him and uh, he can chug a beer like no one's business. But he just he, has a couple and he's hanging. But that's but that's it. You're watching him chug the first beer. Yeah. You know, he's gonna have two. Uh, if he has that third one, you're on. You're really close to what you saw in that Super Bowl video. Austin Lombardi <laughs> Trophy and through through the river and. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. The only thing that would have made that better is if it would have sunk. And yeah. and and. 
I'll, I'll just be the first to say I wouldn't have lost respect for anybody that was on that boat if that happened. I think it would have been hilarious. I would have been like, I can make another one. What are you doing? <laughs> I would have been doing the same thing. <laughs> exactly. 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 And that's after not having the diet that he has. <laughs> it, would, it, would, it would take a couple more to get to that point. But yeah. <laughs> still get there. Anyway. Uh, all right. So anything else you want to say about the Steelers or uh... – no, I think I, I, my body, I went through so many, so many highs and lows, uh, going in in that last week that, uh, I'm just happy they're playing our game, another, uh, game to watch. I got to let my kids around here. We have, uh, every year going back, I think like 94. So I grew up, we have a guy, Roger Wood, that made a Steelers fight song. Steelers are going to the Super Bowl. And he's been adjusting as needed every year since 94. So like I just remember in grade school, riding the bus and the local radio stations would be play it when they get to the playoffs. And I got to have the kids. He made one this year. He had to hurry up cause he didn't think he'd have to. So he hurry up, <laughs> made one for this year. And uh, so I just played it for them. So I got to have a little bit of fun with that. Cause uh, so this is a nice little, little ad that I wasn't expecting to have this year. So, so uh, super surreptitious uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> and them yeah. the Steelers. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, man. Well, have a good one and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Great talking to you as always. Hey, you bet. Take care. All right.